Hi, um, I'm Martha Wilford. I am also a PhD candidate in the government department here at Cornell. And I'm going to be talking about one of the many ways that I use GIS in my dissertation, which looks at patterns of village level public goods investments in rural Senegal. And by public goods in my dissertation, I'm specifically talking about primary schools, basic um, healthcare facilities, and clean water infrastructure. Although in this talk, I'm going to limit my uh, discussion of this to primary schools. Um, so there's been a growth of work by political scientists in the last few years attempting to explain why public goods go to the communities that they do in Africa. Um, and in large part, this has been fueled by an increased availability of data following the um, passing of the Millennium Development Goals, which has sort of finally given us micro-level data um, in these areas. Um, but since we're often too cynical to believe that African governments are, uh, you know, the proverbial benevolent developmentalist-minded dictator, uh, who are really seeking to provide goods to their citizens, most of our theories about public goods investments are seeking to explain why goods are deviated to certain communities to meet some sort of political objective. So the most prominent theories of this are that public goods go to co-ethnics of leaders, they go to co-partisans, leaders are more likely to send goods to their home villages or home regions, etc. But what this means is that all of this work is relying on some ideal point that would be development maximizing and that this is sort of what it's being deviated from. But aside from controlling from local population, there isn't actually really much of a sense about what this ideal point would be and we don't really have an efficient way to measure this. Um, so in one of the things that I do in my uh, dissertation is I use location allocation models, which Yao Ling has graciously helped me out by introducing, to sort of come up with some metric about where the best place to build an actual um, infrastructure, in this case, primary schools is. So to give you an overview of my data, um, these are all of Senegal's 380 local governments as of 2010. So since 1996, local governments have been in charge of primary school infrastructure construction. Um, we have all 1,500 and uh, all 14,524 rural villages in Senegal, along with a variety of characteristics like population, et cetera. And then I have all the new schools that were built between 2002 and 2012, the years in which I am looking at this, mostly because those are the years which I've been. Um, all right, so I'm going to give you an example of sort of why we might have puzzling deviations. I'm going to use the example of Tuba and Bull, which is a, a rural local government in the middle of the country. So here's the general shape of the government. Here's population-sized villages, right? Here we have existing schools in the baseline time period. And here we have where schools actually go. The so Tuban Bull builds four schools during this time period. And we can see immediately that there's a very large village that we would expect to get a school that doesn't. But as well, there's sort of, we see that schools sometimes are going to near villages that already have schools, right? So we can sort of wonder about why these schools are being placed in this way. And this is the type of puzzling variation that I'm going to be uh, looking at. Um, so I'm using location allocation models in order to test whether these, these points that seem like they should get a school really are the best place to get a school and then sort of to use that as a, as a baseline. And so um, all right, here I'm going to use the example of Arilao, which is in the northeast of the country. So once again, we have um, villages, we have routes between villages, blue points are existing schools. And I'm first going to look at maximizing attendance models. So the idea here is that we want to maximize the total number of users who can access a school, right? So I population weight all of the villages. I guess they aren't actually that much larger, but they did sort of change. And they look at all um, the access rate of three kilometers, which is the Senegalese state standard of how close they want all citizens to be to a primary school. And then this sort of uh, takes into account the existing capacity of schools in villages. So villages that already have a school can be assigned a new school if sort of the population is large enough to merit it. And then it gives me a prediction about what the best place is to build a school, assuming they want to build one school. And it suggests that this village, which is the village of Ida, should get the school. Alternatively, we might think that if we want to think of an ideal point, it's not just about maximizing attendance, but it might be about maximizing coverage, right? So we might want to maximize just in absolute terms the percent of the population that's within three kilometers, right? Because this might help them meet the Millennium Development Goal objectives that have been set for them. So here, once again, I draw buffers of three kilometers around existing schools and villages without a school, which are the gray buffers. And it'll then choose, again, the village that's going to most likely maximize this, which again, it selects the village of Ida, which does receive a, a school in this time period. So what this allows me to do is sort of take these ideal points and then look at whether or not villages that would have been covered had the ideal point been met and compare that to the deviation, looking at a range of sort of the theorized and existing um, explanations for this. And without going into my theory at all, I'm just going to show you that sort of this allows me to sort of create a measurable um, phenomenon or sort of data point in which I can sort of compare 
whether or not they're building schools that maximize attendance, maximize coverage in every time point, and sort of use that as a metric.